Hi friends, welcome back to another reading vlog. So this reading vlog is going to be a deliberate one. I have, I got this idea when I got my very first mystery eBay historical romance box. I know I'm swinging this book around. I'll show you. <laughs> and then I'll get to the point. But I thought it would be a fun idea to read the oldest historical romance book that I have contrasted to the newest one that I have. So I looked through all of the historicals that I have. I found this one by Jude Devereaux, Velvet Angel. Look at the back. And this it was published in 1983, and so that is almost 40 years old, right? Math is hard. But um, I am very, very nervous to read this. Honestly, I really am. I read the back cover and I'm going to read it to you too because it really deserves to be read in its entirety. It's only like two paragraphs. But what I wanted to see, or the whole reason I wanted to do this vlog, was to see how women are presented in general in these uh, historical romances. I think that if you're a fan of historical romances, you know that like the very beginning, um, like Kathleen Woodowis and Joanna Lindsay's even, they are definitely um, problematic and they don't often portray a really strong feminist character. So I thought it would really be interesting to sort of contrast the way they were written when they were originally published with the standard of what we have going for us right now. So when I finished reading um, Daring and the Duke by Sarah McLean, which is such a strongly female, powerful book, it's just, it's a beautiful example of fighting the patriarchy and feminism, and it's just lovely. And I was wishing when I finished that that I had thought to chose that for this vlog, but I didn't know it was going to be like that, so, <laughs> because that would have been a really great comparison. Obviously, I don't know anything about this. I have actually read Jude Devereaux years and years ago. I remember my mom had her books, and I read a couple of them too. I don't have remember what they were about, but I do remember reading them. So um, I am really, really interested to see what's in this little gem. So let me read you the back cover. It says, At last the soaring, breathless, tumultuous climax of the Montgomery Annals. So this apparently is the third in a trilogy. So I'm hoping that doesn't matter because I obviously I can't find the first two. <laughs> uh, she came to him as a precious gift, a naked angel rolled in a rug. Once he gazed into her green eyes, saw her tangle of honey blonde hair, he was undone with passion. Elizabeth would never surrender. He was a hated Montgomery, she was a Chatworth, and the blood war between their families raged on a wildfire of rape, murder, and betrayal. Elizabeth vowed to fight the handsome lord to resist the burning desire in his eyes and the rough sweetness of his kisses. So, whew. This is going to be an experience. But, uh, yeah. So, I haven't quite decided what my newest historical romance is going to be. I have a few ideas. I have one in particular that I want to do, but I kind of want to read this first. Oh, maybe I shouldn't. Should I just choose one right now? I'm going to just choose one right now. Okay, so this is the book that I was thinking I would pair it with, but I wasn't quite sure. It, I felt like it would be a little too obvious, and that is The Raycast by Scarlett Peckham. I know this is deeply feminist as we have the gender swapped rake role so she is the one who is the rake so i think this will be a, a very interesting comparison to see how these two perform against each other i mean i i i'm not going to hate read this like that's not what this is i really just want to see what was being written at that time you know and i also am really hoping to see the good, the good qualities here and why she was such a popular author and why it was consistently published. I mean, obviously, if this was, it says she's a best-selling author. Um, uh, she had a trilogy, so it must have been popular. These are the two books I'm going to read. I'll start with this one, and then I will move on to the Rake S, and then I will give you my thoughts as I read them. I am honestly quite excited about this. Let's hope. <laughs> Let's hope this is a good experiment. I honestly have heard a little bit of mixed, mixed reviews about the Rake S, but I am going in with an open mind and hoping to really like it. So I'll let you know what happens as I progress in these books. So wish me luck. 
Okay, let's update. Let's update. <laughs> let's update Velvet Angel. So, this book is bad. This this is this is not a good book. This objectively, this is not well written. Objectively, the plot is non-existent and boring, and objectively, it's damaging. I just don't like it. It's honestly really bad. So I read the first chapter and I wanted to update you then because I just knew right then that this, this would not, was not going to hold up over 40 years, almost 40 years. Um, the writing style is very, very amateurish because the, the word choice that she uses are very basic, very almost just very elementary, you know? She always chooses the obvious. That That's what I would say is the biggest issue here, is that it's very obvious. There's no subtlety here. There's no depth here. It, everything is a surface level. It's, it's heavy-handed, very heavy-handed. It relies on... I mean, that, and we're just talking about the writing style, right? And I... I feel a little bad saying that because I, I like, okay, so this was written in 1983, so I actually googled what po what were the books that were popular among women? What were the best-selling books among, geared towards women at that time? And so when I looked that up, there were, there were some Stephen King, there were um, a lot of, like, picture books for children, and, and a lot of Beverly Cleary, which I guess women were buying those books, obviously, for their children. The There was a Danielle Steele book, which I had completely forgotten about Danielle Steele. I read those when I was starting out in getting interested in romance. I read my mom's Danielle Steele's. Um, but yeah, there, there, were the, there were very, very few books on bestseller lists that were geared towards women. So I can see how this became popular. I can see how this had appeal. The heroine, Elizabeth, on the surface, she does appear to be strong, right? She She's portrayed as a feisty, fight back, you know, character. Like, she picks up an axe and swings it around when she gets captured, which she's very, very uh, quickly, ta that axe is taken away, you know? <laughs> like, the, the men are, it's, it's almost comical how quickly she gets overtaken and that axe is nothing. Like, she clearly has no strength to be wielding an axe. But she tries, you know. Um, but she has a lot of attitude, and honestly, she's just, she's not a very likable character at all. She's a brat. I can't connect with her at all. I feel like this is just, this book absolutely doesn't hold up. It's it's not good. I'm not recommending it, <laughs> obviously. So this was really just an experiment to see how the oldest historical romance that I have would hold up. And the answer is, it doesn't. It just really doesn't. And as I read the first chapter, I almost stopped reading this and picked up like a Joanna Lindsay. Um, Hearts of Flame, I know, is pretty well received. And I know that it has gotten quite a few high ratings from modern readers. So I was, I was tempted to switch and go to that one. But in keeping with the theme, I decided to stick with this one. So I, I do know that Obviously, there there were other books written at this time that may very well stand up today. This one just doesn't. I, I honestly, I feel like I have to finish it. I'm going to probably skim read it, so I'm not finished reading this book yet. But I'm 60 pages in. My general impression is it's not good. It doesn't hold up. It doesn't hold up as a piece of literature, of fiction. It certainly doesn't hold up as a romance novel. Because let me tell you about the hero, okay? So the hero is Miles, and he's basically just a... This is set in the 1500s also, so you also kind of have that. Stereotypes, you know, like, women really had no social standing whatsoever, had no value other than their bodies and their ability to produce children. And so that is just really a very distasteful thing to read about. So Miles is... I don't even really know. He's not like a king. He's some type of nobility. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but he's wealthy. He has guards. He's, you know, he's not a king, but he's some type of nobility. So he basically just gets gifted with Elizabeth from like a 
rival almost as a peace offering i guess so she was stolen from her family literally undressed wrapped in a rug delivered to him naked like it's it's honestly almost comical <laughs> it's not meant to be but it just reminds me of a monty python movie like that's the type of thing that i'm thinking this uh, and i i am not trying to hate on this too bad because i do i do feel like you know 1983 I feel a little bad because I definitely am coming across harsh on this as a modern reader looking for a modern feeling romance where the heroine is strong and confident and has, you know, the cap the abilities that we look for in modern day romance novels. She just doesn't have any of those. So <clears throat> she's delivered to him. She's delivered to him wrapped up in a rug, totally naked. It's really weird. Like, it's just, it's just weird. And... Miles is like, like, I feel like she's going really out of her way to make you like him, but in a very stereotypical way. Like, there's one description where he's described as the type of man who loves women, but it's supposed to be like a very benevolent type of love, because they describe it in the same way that some men love good horses or love, you know, weaponry. Like, that's just something that they love, and he just loves women, and I'm just like, I just, I just don't know how that is a flattering comparison or how that is supposed to make us feel like he's a good guy because he just loves women. Like somebody likes a really nice piece of horse flesh, you know, like I just, I just don't, I just, anyway, so there are some scenes with him interacting with like uh, the barmaid or young children and, and he's clearly supposed to be very kind and charitable and thoughtful, but it just... It just rings very false. It's just, it's just, uh, it's just not good, man. So, and then let's talk about the uh, romance, because there really isn't one at all. Although he definitely is attracted to her, and he says that several times, that he thinks she's beautiful, and, and that's another thing that really bugged me, is that he, his way of trying to soften her towards him was basically just to compliment her beauty. And, uh, I just... So then there are the scenes when they're together, and he basically forces a kiss on her. But it's not like, but he's not, like, using force. It's, like, he. it just says, like, oh, he just kissed her. And then, <laughs> and it's just, it's just weird, like, I... I don't, I don't know. I don't like it. It's just weird. But her response to his kisses, it's never anything other than she wipes it away. And that upsets him that she wipes his kisses away. Honestly, this, this book is giving me so much secondhand embarrassment. <laughs> like, it's just so bad. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. It's just, it's just not good. And it really doesn't hold up. So now I'm super curious to read a Joanna Lindsay that was written within five years of this, because this is honestly... It's just not good. So, the, and those scenes where, like, this this is something else that really gets, got, gets to me that I feel like I have to talk about. Those scenes where he, like, kisses her or tries to make some physical advances where you can tell that the author's trying to make it seem like he's just being so nice and loving and caring and he's just, you know, he's just being such a nice guy. It just makes, literally makes me sick to my stomach because it just is so cringy and just, like, like, I just don't like it at all. So this is, uh, this is just terrible. So I'm, I'm going to just skim read through the rest of this because I, I've already formed my opinion. It, nothing in here is going to change it. I really am curious to see if there, if I get any type of feeling from the romantic relationship, like, because let me tell you something else. Okay. So I looked up this author on Goodreads. I looked this book up on Goodreads. This book has an average 4.1 star rating. And it's not from, you know, like, readers who read this 10 years ago. Like, there are readers who read this uh, two or three years ago who just loved it. So now I'm also thinking, like, uh, like, what's wrong with me? No, nothing. This is not a good book. It's just not. It's just not good. So maybe those people read it out of nostalgia or, or something. I don't know. It's just, it's confusing to me because... Maybe it was reprinted. Maybe I like this is the first printing of this edition, 
which I still think is really cool and I'm going to keep it just because I think it's kind of neat to have a piece of historical romance history like that. And uh, if for no other reason then this has been an experience and it's definitely, it's definitely been thought provoking. It's definitely been really, really made me appreciate modern day romance novels and especially modern day historical romance novels. Like the comparison, the comparison of this next to let me grab it. Next to this piece of amazing literature by Sarah McLean, like, there, there is literally, you could not pick two books to be more different as far as how they represent romance and women. It's just, this is empowering and strong. There, It's super filled with emotion, filled with, it's just great. And then this is just like, I don't know. I don't know, man. So, uh, yeah. And honestly, like, I really have to say, any woman that has been able to be a best-selling writer, I mean, hats off to them. That's fantastic. I applaud Jude Devereaux for that. I think that is freaking amazing, honestly. I, she built, she built a really strong career. She has so many novels that she has written people love her. I, I, I've read her. I don't remember a thing about it. I tried to find the books I read when I was looking her up on Goodreads, but I know I've read her before. Years and years ago, when I was probably like 14, I know I, I know I read some of hers. But this one is just not good. <laughs> so yeah, that's, uh, that's all I'm really going to say about this, other than I just we've come a long way. We have come a long way as far as books for women, as far as romance novels go, as far as it's just like this is a piece of amazing writing and it it's really really interesting to see how far the industry has come, you know? Like, I just, I really think that's so cool. I am sure at its time, I, I, I can see, I definitely can see the escapist qualities to this. I could see, you know, being a woman in that time and wanting to escape in fiction and picking this up and probably getting swept away. I totally can see that, you know? Does it, would it have appeal to modern day readers? No, for sure, no, well, absolutely not. There, mm -mm, it just doesn't. But in its day, I, I definitely could see that it had value, you know? So far, I haven't ran into any rape on the page, although it is mentioned explicitly. It, it's not mentioned explicitly as far as described, but they throw that word around all the time. All the time. And I find that very uncomfortable, to say the least. I don't I don't like that at all. So it's, uh, it's uh, interesting. I, I really... I really just, we've just come a long way, a very long way. <laughs> so yeah, it makes me very interested to pick this up next. I'm so excited to get this after this. It's going to be an experience. So I'm going to finish this. going to probably skim read most of it, honestly. I don't, I just want to, I really want to see the romance. If there's, if there's, if there is actually a romance, because right now it's really just, him trying to kiss her and him, her wanting to kiss away, and I'm just like, oh, it's, a uh, oh, it's interesting, yeah, so, all right, that's it for this update, we'll check in with you later. Too many days in the darkness, without a glimpse of the light, running tired and broken and scared, but I swear I'll never give up the fight. I see you broken and beat, head pulled down over your eyes. Every part of you wants to surrender, darling, you were meant to survive. With every star, we are So I'm going to try and hurry and do this clip before the uh, light leaves for good. <laughs> I can't believe it's getting dark so early now. I hate it. So 
this is an update for my reading progress of the Ray Kess. So I haven't quite finished Velvet Angel yet, but I just, it's the weekend um, when I started this vlog. It was Monday and I just really wanted something a little more modern that I thought I would like a little better to read on the weekend because that's when I read the most. It's Saturday night. I just picked this up. I'm only three chapters in, but I'm already just swept up into this world. And I really feel like it, it's such a, such a dichotomy between the two of these because the writing in this is so modern, so relatable, but the time period is still historical, late 1800s. And it, the opening, there's an opening note from the author that talks about her feelings about the, uh, Mary Shelley's mother, whose name was Mary Wollstonecraft, and how she was sort of the inspiration for this book. And I really thought the, the author's note is worth reading. It's in the beginning. Definitely read that before you read this book because it really lays out that the whole point of this is to prove the point of why was it so socially acceptable for men to be rakes? We see this still today, right? Where they were sexually promiscuous with all kinds of women and it was considered a badge of honor. But a woman could lose her entire reputation simply from a rumor. I feel like I feel like this is is just such a such a powerful read already. I'm already really, really loving it. I I have heard that this is a little bit dark and a little bit heavy and it comes with trigger warnings in the front of it. And um but I just am really excited to see what she does with this flipped trope of a Rakes. And even just in the few chapters that we've had already we get to see Serafina, the main character, already just exudes so much confidence and so much power. And just, like, she is a woman who is going after what she wants, and she's not going to let anybody, not any man, not any society rules, determine what she wants in her life. And I just admire the heck out of her, and I really love this and I'm very excited. Strong, strong feminist vibes in this one. No, I mean, you have a little bit of a hint of where the romance is headed right now, but I'm worried that it's not going to be happy. <laughs> I hope that this book gets a HEA. I hope it gets a happily ever after so bad, but I just wanted to update you with that with my first impressions on this because I am really, really enjoying it. I did read further into Velvet Angel and I started to feel a little bit of hope in that because it, it seemed like you know, there was a scene when Miles and Elizabeth both kind of were with Miles' son from another woman. Like, he has multiple children with multiple different women, and that is just, like, it's just, I mean, like, it's just kind of weird. It's, it's kind of weird to have that as a hero, just because, like, he doesn't, he's not with the women. It was just, it was literally just, like, the child was the product of passion this multi and I I don't know like it's just weird you know they had this scene where they went off and they're traveling and then all of a sudden Miles entourage and guards just disappear and they can't find them and so Elizabeth and Miles feel like they are abandoned and they're in danger and so they spend some time in the woods together and Elizabeth starts to soften towards him and I actually started to get a little caught up in the story then but then you find out that Miles had planned the whole thing for his men to leave them in the woods so he could seduce her. And I'm just like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> like, how am I supposed to like this guy? How am I supposed to root for them to be a couple? It's just impossible. So anyway, that's an update. I will check in with you later. I may not check back in until I finish unless something really happens in this book because I'm afraid this vlog is going to be very long, but it's interesting. Like I said, the dichotomy between the two, like you could not get more polar opposites. So it's a very interesting reading experience. I'm excited to see what happens next with this book. I'll keep you updated. All right, let's wrap this reading vlog up. So, so I, so I DNF'd this. I, I read 200 pages of it. I really, I really tried. I really wanted to read the whole thing and just have a really good understanding of what was being written at the time. And I, I really wanted there to be some good qualities in this, but I really just, I just had to quit reading it. So Miles and Elizabeth still hadn't quite come together. They didn't have any type of a romance really. And at one point, in the scene she's still like he's still 
pursuing her and she she is still rejecting him and claiming she's not interested but she kind of like acts like she is you know it's really 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 annoying honestly <laughs> I just hated it but the thing that really pushed me over the edge is like he they finally get to a castle and he's saying how she needs to have a bath and she's really fighting him on having a bath and he finally bodily forces her into the bath and and just like like I I don't know it was just so awful because he was like I know because on the page it says I'm gonna make you do this because I know what's best for you and you clearly don't and do we all agree that that is never okay right and I understand this was written in 1983 but it still sort of breaks my heart that that attitude that men had for making decisions for the women in their lives was okay I think that is just disgusting and I hate it I mean especially I just I just hated it so I was like really so she takes a bath and then he's like washing her face with a washcloth and is being very gentle and kind and finally that's the point where she decides that she's gonna invite him to her bed and she uh, uh, I just I'm like I I just no zero zero like I just I really hated this honestly I I really really didn't like it I just definitely doesn't hold up. I, I can see and understand that it would have appeal 40 years ago. It doesn't hold up at all. Like, no. One star. I'm not even going to rate this because I didn't finish it and I don't feel like rating it would it just, no. Like, this was, this was, this was a very sad look at what the attitudes towards women's and their choice was at the time. In a way, I could see how she was trying to give Elizabeth a little bit of power to choose to invite him to her bed you know like she was the one who makes the choice whereas like I said before like they talk about rape so often in here and it sounds like that was all of her experience and so for her to make the choice and choose Miles that felt like her freedom but for a modern reader reading that it's just it's really just heartbreaking and disgusting and very off-putting and I didn't like it and I'm done talking about this most of this blog has been me talking about how much I dislike this book but it just really kind of breaks my heart to see this be a bestseller and th this was the attitude, you know? So, which brings me to this amazing book right here. I finished this last night. Honestly, I adored it. I just loved this book so much. This is a very, very powerfully feminist book. I really love the message in here of Serafina or Sarah going to I mean like she she makes hard choices but not really like I don't even want to say that she makes choices for things that she wants that were not socially acceptable for her rakecast right so a, a male rake is basically like a playboy so he you know it was accepted even applauded for men at that time to have multiple lovers whereas women were never even allowed to kiss a man in public or she was ruined for life and wouldn't be able to be married and and as that was really the only way that they could advance their financial situation she was really kind of doomed to a life of poverty if that happened so that's that's what's especially powerful about this book is that Sarah takes that choice into her own hands and decides that she is going to live with the consequences not simply because she wants that experience which she does but also because she is so infuriated at the system of what it does to women versus what it does to men when they when they experience the same life situations like I'm getting chills just talking about this this is such a great book it's so powerful it's definitely not a very happy funny light-hearted historical romance at all but if you like any type of like a dark contemporary like even like a Kerrigan Byrne type of book I think you would love this this was so good I gave this four and a half stars out of like I want to give it a five star read five stars but at the same time it, it there were parts of this that weren't weren't really enjoyable to read just because they were so heartbreaking you know and it does end end happily ever after you do get a happily ever after in here so that's good but getting there and seeing the suffering and uh, it was it was so heartbreaking like I don't know maybe this is a five star read because it's a five star read I changed my mind this is a five star read I can't stop thinking about it it's a powerful impact impactful book and it's just 
amazing. So let me just read you. I tabbed a couple of things. I finally found my tabs because this book just like oh, struck me so much. So this isn't a spoiler. This is just to kind of give you a sense of of what you're getting into when you read this book. It's from Adam's point of view. He's the love interest and um, he is a widow and he their relationship is so complex because he's a widow and he deeply loved his wife and they had children so he's got two little kids but he is so lonely and he really just responds to Serafina like when they have their first meeting it's just so romantic and powerful and you can tell there are such strong feelings between the two of them and so he's talking about um Serafina's whole perspective on women's rights and not even women's rights humans rights equal rights and he said um, her story was a cry in defense of humanity over the expectations of one station he felt it powerfully the injustice of wanting more than what the world believed you were entitled to and I just oh my gosh this book was so good it was just it, it was a great story in that I read this in a day once I picked it up and read just a few pages, I was invested, completely invested, couldn't put it down, thinking about it the whole time. Can't stop thinking about it today. This was amazing. I just loved it. Loved it so much. And it was such a stark contrast to the other book that I had picked. I wish I had spent more time dissecting this and reading and talking about this, but honestly, I was so caught up in reading it and just experiencing the emotions of reading it that I really really didn't want to take time away to talk about it. I just, oh, it was so good. But the thing that I feel like was such a powerful, a powerful juxtaposition between this and Velvet Angel, it was just seeing how you have a woman who sees the injustice of what's being done to women in her time, and she is not going to put up with it. She's willing to embrace whatever consequences come. And, and it goes into very deep detail about what happens to her because of the choices she makes. But she's doing that because she knows it's the right thing to do. And she, it's just, I don't know. I feel like I'm not doing this book justice. It was fantastic. It was so good. Whereas you have this book here and her character is so weak and so, and not that she, not weak physically, and not, uh, she, I can't really, I'm having a hard time destroying this, but like even when she puts up a fight, it's it's never about women everywhere. It's only about her and what she doesn't want, you know, and that's okay too, because I, I mean, I don't expect all women everywhere to want to fight for injustice for all womankind, but it was just, this was just like, it wasn't an engaging story. It was really disappointing how they presented women, how they portray women. And especially how they portray what the men in their lives do for women. Whereas this book really was empowering and inspiring. And it made me want to stand up and shout, yes, this is what we need more of. It was so good. Oh my gosh, it was so good. The, the love story between them definitely, it almost felt like it took, not a backseat, but the overpowering vibes of this was absolutely um, feminist and the social inequalities and the social injustices but the love story was still there and it was very 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 powerful and sweet when you had it so it it was just so good it was it was this is this is this is amazing this is an amazing book it's honestly one of the best books i've read in a really long time and i honestly feel like i feel like a lot of people will see this shelved as historical romance or they will see the cover which I think is beautiful, but I understand that some people don't like that. And they'll discount the value that is in here. How empowering this book is for women. Fighting injustice, fighting for equality, and they'll think it's just a fluffy story. Which, there's nothing wrong with fluffy stories. But this is me coming to you again and saying, there is powerful, impacting moments being written in romance books for women and most people will never see them because they are so blinded by it being shelved as a romance. And that is really sad because this is a powerful book. If you love anything that has strong female characters, that has really strong feminist 
equality vibes, please read this. Even if you don't read romance, even if you don't read historical romance, you need to read this book. It was amazing. So, well, I think I've rambled on quite long enough. <laughs> this was a really, really interesting vlog. It was really interesting to see the differences in the writing styles and especially just, I don't know, I've, I've, I feel like I've come away from this just so much more appreciative of this genre and the impact that it can have in the lives of men and women everywhere. I feel like if men read this, they would be impressed too. But anyway, thanks so much for watching this vlog. I really hope that you enjoyed this. Um, let me know your thoughts. And if you have read this, or if maybe I've inspired you to read it, let me know that too. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.